well, 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 well. You, 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 you started giving it a mind. <laughs> I was starting to scared. Yeah, they came on side, I've got a plan. I don't care what you are doing. I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy's like, don't start, don't, don't start. Calm down. Calm down, calm down. Really on. Oh, oh, no, I can't say this on camera. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you can. No, I can't. Why it's not about it? us, no. It's not oh, about sorry. us. Okay. <laughs> right. about anything you like about me, I guess. Okay, so far I've been really, really bothered about what I want out of the project and what's been going on for me and what's been going on for my side and what's been going on for the Reno. But I have to introduce our hero in the pit <laughs> yesterday, right? Sarah Cattell, who we seriously, without Sarah, and I feel emotional saying this, no, me me. You, no, we've been together for 12 months really working on this, haven't yeah. we? And you helped me work out all the budget, all the planning. All when I became fun. hysterical at times when I didn't get the money, she's just got that kind of nature that keeps everything calm. Do you know what I mean? She just said, it'll be all right, do you yeah. know? And we will keep it open and we are going to do this, didn't you? Every single time. And here we are. And here we are. And, we are. and we're absolutely doing it. And you look wonderful in the pit, especially scratching your bum. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I, I don't know what to say after that. And I want to introduce, I don't, I can't remember your second name. Coots. Coots. Andy Coots. Andy Coots, who on the first day has been a complete hero as well and like jumped into the pit and was getting all the bricks out and which invigorated the first day, I must say. You know, and Andy's also an archaeologist. And, and uh, tell us a bit about the archaeology of it for you because I'm bothered about the Reno. Yeah. Right, and getting booked. And we've been digging around the site, which has annoyed me at times because I'm bothered about people conserving their energy. But actually, when they started digging, they they've going. loved it. It's actually trying to stop them digging. Yeah. That's, that is yeah. invigorating to watch. I mean, yeah. Normally, we're having to do it ourselves. Oh, okay. And to actually stand there and watch other people do it. Yeah. It's quite refreshing, actually. I go home and I'm not as tired as I usually am. I didn't know that. I thought that, yeah, I thought yeah. people just started digging. And we yeah. sat in a room. That is full of finds, and I Absolutely didn't really chocolate. expect to find anything. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I just thought it'd all just be trashed. I think well, the yeah. champagne bottle so far and the players, I think that they have to they go down really as, really. as part and parcel of the arena. Definitely. That kind of ties yeah. it all together quite nicely. Yeah. The dice as well. And the dice. Yes. No, the dice course, is yeah. super fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, go on, but, tell us a bit about your journey in it. Well, it's, it's been great. We've had times where we've panicked about it not working out, haven't we? And panicked about whether it's going to go ahead. And then as we've got a bit closer in, we've started worrying about how we're going to sort the site out and all that kind of stuff. But with all these things, once it always sounds and feels a lot scarier before you start. And once you get going on it, actually, it turns out all right. And you know that when you can start seeing the archaeology and it starts coming through and looking better, you know that you're halfway there and it's not far to go and it will all, all be okay in the end. Yeah. You can look at it sometimes and go, oh, we've not got enough people to dig it, yeah. or oh, we've got too many people to dig it, yeah. or the machine's not in the right place. But one way or another, we manage to get it all, and it all works out in the end. So we're just trying to do it so that it's what we're used to doing as a, as a site, is to get an area that we're going to excavate and do the lot of it, whether it's part of the thing that we're originally looking for or not. We want to make sure that everything that we uncover is all uncovered to the same standard, and it looks the same, and it looks good. Because there might be things that, although it's not part of the Reno itself, we might find something on this other side of the site that actually somebody might drop when they were running out the back door kind of thing. Yeah, so which you, you never... have, actually. Oh, exactly. oh, yeah, I've had a this few plastic bags, yes. So, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's always going to be things that come up that you don't expect to come up, or you don't expect to come up in a place where you are. And plus the fact, it just pads out the story as well. Yeah. So we've got the Reno, and we've got the back entrance, and we're going to have the gambling room and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it's jogging people's memories. And if you listen to them while they're digging, they say, oh, yeah, the West, we're in the back of the Western now. So I remember the Western. Yeah. And I can remember that we did this and we did that. Yeah. And then we went down the Reno. And then we came out and did something else. So it's it's just filling out that, that picture. It's it's kind of sorting the, the whole circle out, what everybody out, does. It? Yeah. Because people have been there. It's yeah. like talking to Colin this morning. I mean, his <clears> uncle, I believe, was the one that actually ran that place. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah, they did. And he's, he's very impassioned about the whole thing. Um, 
I understand it. So, I mean, the thing was, I would rather he actually came in here and vocalised his opinion in here, tell us his stories. That's what we want to do. That, that's, and like Sarah says, the whole thing is then padded out. It starts making sense. We can't create these things. No. These yeah. things create themselves. Yeah. And they've already been sort of labelled in history as they are. I mean, the Hacienda's got a gravy now. The Reno now needs that same applaud. Which it will do now. Yeah. Because it is no, in our hearts, it has yeah. got yeah. that. So it's great to honour yeah. it. I mean, two of the three of us have been in the place. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. still I vaguely remember being in there. Yeah. I'm not sure how I'm I got out. Yeah. There we go. Well, it's just a baby, it's that's what it is. It's a baby. It's really nice as well, though, to be able to dig something that people can still remember. Yeah. Because we dig stuff all the time that people can remember when they were a kid. I used to play in there or I used to go in there or whatever. You always get someone that says, oh, you're digging in the wrong place. It's not there, it's over here. Which is fine, but when we dig stuff up, we're we're looking at two, three hundred years before the last living person touched it, kind of yeah. thing. Whereas here, we can hold up a bottle and say, "Anybody drink this?" Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The flares, who's of these? Yeah. yeah. And, well, we know and those flares are yours. <laughs> it's just a really different experience for us as archaeologists, but it's brilliant because you've got almost immediate confirmation that you're either digging in the right place, or you've got the thing that you think you've got, or you know your interpretation of the site, which is normally all it can end up as. You know, there are some things you just won't answer the question. Whereas here, brilliant. Yeah. You've got 20 people on hand at any one time that can all go, yeah, that's right, or that's wrong, or that's this, Granted, or that's they that. don't necessarily all agree with you. No, other. but that's what makes it interesting. It does. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you think, this is like a question that's probably not got an answer yet, but do you think it will affect how you do archaeology in the future? I think it will, I think it will have an impact because this is a group of people that very rarely get involved with archaeology. We have, and we have had for years, tried to get as many diverse people as we can into archaeology. But what this has pointed out to us, that in order to kind of broaden people's appreciation of archaeology, because a lot of trouble that we've had in the past of getting people who, who maybe have come from other countries that now live here, is to get them to realise that, no, this is still your heritage. I know you might have come from somewhere else, but now this is all part of your heritage because you've either grown up here or your kids have grown up here. You have now got that connection to a place. And sometimes we've had trouble trying to get people to see how much fun it is. But what we've worked out here is actually what we need to do is find something that means something to people. And then they're getting stuck in. And then we get people like Myra and Barry who are like, I love digging now. I don't care yeah. where I dig. Whether and Maggie, Reno my or name. Else. Yeah, Maggie, yeah, exactly. Maggie was, and I've got to say this on camera, Two other women came today, kind of like white middle class liberals, and they like well, and they um, that's the only way I can say it. And they came in here and they was looking at the finds, and they said this will make them look at archaeology totally different because they suddenly realised that in Roman times and Greek times there must have been this place. Those temples must have felt like yeah. this yeah. field. Yeah, it was an area where everybody came. Yeah, down yeah, there. yeah. Everything was yeah, on the same and it, level. it's not sacred. Yeah. You know, is it sac sac what? Sacred. 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 Yeah. yeah, in the same way that we yeah. hold it, we revere it. Yeah, exactly. And the way they said that, I thought, wow, of course there must have been. And she said, it must have been people like you. Because yeah. the other thing is, you've got to remember that most people think, when they think of archaeology, they think of stuffy old men, very often. Yeah. Uh, without being rude to them, they think of time theme, they think of, oh, all this really slow to clear away yeah. and stuff like that. And then they come on something like this, where not only are they sort of expending their energy and really loving it while they're doing it, they're finding stuff they recognise or they're Absolutely. finding stuff. Sometimes it's stuff that people recognise that they get excited about. Sometimes it's just the fact that no other living human being has touched this for all Aww. these years or whatever. Yeah. And so they come on site and they get really excited by the fact that it's not just the stuff the old men or it's not just for, for people who know exactly. all about history. It's actually for everybody to just get stuck in because it's, apart from anything else, it's brilliant fun. My neighbour, Maggie, was ecstatic. Yeah. She really absolutely she loved it. She just went it. for it. She was amazing. The discussions that have been had about yeah. crisp wrappers and peanut <laughs> yeah. wrappers. No, but what's brilliant about... Sorry for talking over you. What's brilliant about them, Andy, is they date the day it was pulled... They date the year it was yeah. pulled down because they're all dated best before 1986. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know when that's that the real? That's that... <laughs> Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that's well, his legacy. I had a great question and I forgot it. Yeah. Maybe in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah oh, that's that, it. Though. There you go. Besides diverse, which people relate to with um, colour and yeah. heritage and stuff, 
I think working class is also a yeah. member of that diverse Classes, group. Classes, ages, yeah. 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 yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there must be loads of things in people's area that you could dig up that is relevant, oh, yeah. that is relevant to yeah. your class. You know, yeah. to you, but yeah. because you of a working class, you feel like you can't do it, or nobody will care, or you can't raise the money, or yeah. And I think yeah. the thing is, archaeology does have across the country really. Most of the people that get involved in archaeology do tend to be middle class folks. Yes, I know. Whether it's because <laughs> Well, it, <laughs> <laughs> but it I'm might, joking. It might be that they've got the money to have a retirement where they've got the time to yeah, do it. That. It might be that they've got jobs that allow them to have time off or whatever. It might just be the fact that because of, of the way maybe they've been brought up, heritage and the past and their history has been pointed out to them or people have taken the time with it to point out to them this is part of their life. Whereas people who are spending all of their time just trying to make ends meet, just trying well to make sure they can Sarah. feed their kids. They haven't got time to go into well that kind of Sarah. that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think you you find so many people you would class as working class who come on a site and go, do you know what, this is absolutely amazing, and I would never have thought it would be. It looks like scratching around in the dirt, but actually, it's it's dead interesting, and I'd never thought about it. Yeah, and you get so many people who know places who are interested by it but they're not as interested as they realise until they start doing it. When I, when I, was, when I was young, yeah. uh, and I worked with my family, my dad used to take me to various places, usually of archaeological interest, he'd take, take me to castles and various things. He would always tell me stories, he'd tell me tales, that were based in facts, not embellished, but always based in facts, about these places I went to, and I got around touching the walls and things oh. like that, thinking, you know, there's something about this. Yeah. It took me long enough to actually appreciate exactly why he did that. He opened the door for me, and showed me the way through, and I went through on my own. The two brothers that actually wanted to come through that said door, that proverbial door with them. I just went through on my own like some giddy little kid in a sweet shop and thought, this is this is for me. I want there's something along this lines that I want to do. Yeah. Then I got all confused at school and thought I was going to be a rock star because I started <laughs> playing drums in a rock band and I went completely bonkers. Lost the plot <laughs> and it was a lifeguard. So I mean, where'd you go from there? Yeah. Then I started finding sort of dead people in houses, which was absolutely intriguing. What are you on about? <clears> dead I was an environmental officer and I used to find all sorts of nasty things, which I won't go into. And then I decided that my disillusionment with the company I was working for, it was gave me the opportunity to then hopefully get into doing more volunteering from the archaeological point oh, of view because okay. these guys oh this uh, is again, an interesting one go on because people want to get involved they've opened on. up these guys have opened up a door with dig manchester that was the best thing that ever happened to archaeology because it always used to be behind closed doors you're talking about stuffy middle class guys they are all big boards around you can maybe see through a little crack in, a, in a, a, a panel or something like that now these guys for some reason maybe they were taking the wrong kind of medication but mm -hmm. that was all on site and we all got in on site and we saw what it was all about. And I've made that transition through this timeline because of these guys to be where I am today. Go to on. finish work after 38 years with City Council and various other people. And finish work totally and utterly disillusioned with everything and thinking, well, this is a pile of crap. I've had enough of this. Finish work. I've got my pension because I'm that old. Yes, I know you don't. You can't, yeah, we don't you believe, can't believe it. that. Yeah, 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 go on. No, no, no. I don't He's actually. He's just going to his beard you know, <laughs> temporarily. Anyway. Um, and then five months down the line, I get a phone call from Adam, who was here yesterday, and uh, said, how do you fancy being an archaeologist? And I thought, yeah, I'm wow. yeah. Okay. Honestly, I was waiting for the laughter at the other end of the oh, phone. That's wow. what because one of the things they did, my um, persistence with the archaeology, I ended up asking a question at Mellow, which is, um, it goes from the Mesolithic right up to the Victorian period. It's a big hill. What's Mesolithic? In. Mesolithic. It's Before the, the Stone Age. Yeah. Oh, okay. Almost, no, about 10,000 yeah. years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, there, thereabouts. And uh, we were working on this site. And I asked one day how it would be possible for the people on the site who did seemingly a lot more work than I did. I was just there digging holes. Five thousand so. Started to appreciate the archaeology much more because a lot of it's very ephemeral. Yeah. And you can lose it very easily. By what does ephemeral mean? Ephemeral are very vague, very simple. Okay. So oh, you're okay. looking at like post. Uh, post holes and things like that. Oh, okay. So you could scrape right. over and you could lose that yeah. post hole completely because right. you've reached the, the bottom. Yeah, that, yeah. So uh, I, I asked the question can people get an accreditation for this? Because they're doing so much good work around the site and they're all doing it on a voluntary basis. And I was quite envious of these people because I was working and all my holidays I used to just devote time wow. to, to Mellow or whatever archaeology was at the time. Yeah. And they said, well, you're, you've been a lifeguard. He says, what value do you hold on the 25 yards from your certificate? That just means somebody can thrash around, not die, doing 25 yards from the deep end of the shallow end in a pool. And it doesn't mean anything. 
it, mean, it doesn't mean they can swim. It just means they, they didn't drown and they, they survived the 25 yards in the pool. So he said, leave it with me, went away, and then the uh, IFA uh, came up with an idea through Cape Geary uh, to do or uh, extend the MVQ Level 3 for volunteers, because at the time it was only available to students who were doing archaeology. Uh, so is this possible now? If somebody yeah, wanted yeah. to become an archaeologist, like yeah. Maggie yesterday yeah. or Myra, could yeah. they kind of get in touch with Salford University yeah. and join on something yeah. like this? Or the the trick is, yeah, or the IFA. The trick is. So you've done the journey and the journey do can be done. The journey can yeah. be done. Oh, yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Else, it's fun. Really. I've no, never if been you love it, you love it. The more if you, love you come it, on, love it. the more you get enthusiastic about it. And yeah, people can always get in touch with us. We always want people to come Please, you've got people on site who are all like minded. For yes. once in my life, I've actually been in an area where people aren't trying to screw each other over for some reason. <laughs> no, it's really. true enough, yeah. you know. It's amazing. And I must big up Adam. Right. No, I'm How can you big yeah. up someone who's six foot seven? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But. When I first, I didn't know how to articulate, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> Ooh. So I would feel the same way sometimes. Well, it's, uh, it's nice to see you guys getting emotional with that whole mm. thing. Yeah. I didn't know how to articulate what I wanted, and Adam had me in loads of times, and yeah. didn't he? Yeah. For like weeks at a time, you know, yeah. and tried to pull other yeah. bits together, and was inclusive like he was with you. Yeah. So I must pick Adam up because he had the power. And then me and Sarah became a team because we liked each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm only joking. No, Thank no. you, Adam. Thank yeah. you very, very much. Yeah. 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 Well, this is it. We always want to get involved in yeah. new stuff and different stuff. And if we can, we will. Because you can't. Yeah. You can't just pass this over because there's there's not. It's never been done before, or there isn't the money or whatever. It's a learning curve for me, Sarah. Exactly. I mean, Sarah's done a lot of community archaeology yeah. from a supervisory point of view. Yeah. I've done a lot of community archaeology as a volunteer. And I've got to admit, both of us walked off site a couple of times this the last couple of days and thought, I'm relaxed. <laughs> no, absolutely. I won't go through the, the part to have a break. <laughs> yeah. Shall we wrap up, folks? I'll do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah that's all okay, right. Yeah. Thank you both. It's right. wonderful. That's okay. I wasn't yeah. expecting so much great information, actually. <laughs> no, you, you know, to, to see, well, yeah, we are no. deeper than we look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both as well. Smarty. Thank you, Ephraim. Is that all right? Yeah. Lovely. Are we okay. happy? Yeah. yeah. yeah.